welcome back to my channel Plain Not Jane. I am Plain Not Jane and you my friend have tuned into this week's seven. This week's seven is a video series highlighting lessons learned and observations made in my life over the last seven days. And this week's seven starts now. Number one, who actually has the time to beef? I personally make it a point not to beef with people. There's no use in it. It's pointless. Look, if I don't like the fragrance that you are putting out into the air, if I don't like what you bring to the table, then I just avoid you. And if we happen to be in a situation where I'm forced to interact with you, let's say if we work together or in some cases even family members, then I just find the silver lining and limit my exposure to you. So I say all that to say this, there is no point in beefing with folks. That is wasted time, wasted energy, and wasted head space. If you don't like what people bring to the table, then don't invite them to the party. Number two. I don't know why it tickles me so bad, but the fact that Young Mountain likes Netflix so much really makes me giggle. He has it on his tablet, but what really is funny about it to me is that when he goes to Netflix, he will purposely go to the profile selection page and choose his daddy's profile. So when my husband goes into Netflix, he's thinking he's going to see, you know, all these movies and TV shows that he likes. No, he's getting recommendations for stuff like the Magic School Bus Rides Again or recommendations for a Troll Holiday because Young Mountain has been on his profile. I really shouldn't laugh at him because it ripped like... Young Mountain has really messed with his show recommendations. Um, <laughs> and he's gone in to fix them. But every time he goes in to fix them, Young Mountain jacks them all up again the next time he goes to Netflix. So I think what I'm going to do is just make a profile for Young Mountain um, and just talk to him and make sure he understands that he is to only use his profile and not his daddy's profile. <laughs> Number three, there is power in wearing the proper undergarments. Now, I have always been a slip wearer. I grew up wearing slips. Like, I really was that little girl that wore slips under her dresses to church. With my mama and my grandma, like, you were not going to put on a dress without a slip. And yes, I did have the big poofy slips with the petticoats on them. Yeah, I had a couple of those, too. You know, that's just that's just how I was raised. We I grew up wearing slips. But recently, I have discovered the confidence that comes with pant slips and smoothing shapewear. Okay? I didn't even know a pant slip was a real thing. Um, but I, I, I found one. I, need, I, I had some pants that were fitted and kind of thin, but I really liked them. And I needed something to help smooth out the lines and dimples and crinkles and stuff. And I discovered the pant slip like everybody should have a pant slip if you are wearing pants that are not lined not under your jeans maybe not but under all of your other pants you need a pant slip a pant slip is basically like a regular slip you wear it under over your underwear but under your clothes and it just helps smooth out those lines similar to smooth and shapewear uh, I call it smooth and shapewear the shapewear that doesn't like cinch and clench and stop you from breathing it just kind of keeps everything in place so you know when you shout stuff don't get to moving around I am just so happy that I recently discovered these things and they are now like members of the family they're, they're going to get Christmas stockings. Um, they don't have birthdays, but you know, they'll have. They'll be at the birthday parties for sure. They will be in the place. I am now a, a believer in shapewear and pant slips, and I encourage every woman who wears unlined pants to invest in at least one pant slip and or a smoothing shapewear garment. Like, it's a must. It's an absolute must. So, yeah, get that done. Number four. No is always an option. I have the option of telling you no to anything that you ask me. That is 
my choice. I can say no to your conversation. I can say no to your visit. I can say no to anything that is an invasion of my personal space, my time, or my energy. And it is okay to tell people no. Now, it can be a little uncomfortable sometimes telling people no, because people have a tendency to believe that you're obligated to them, but you're not. I'm not. And I'm growing more and more comfortable with exercising my no muscle. Number five, stop getting mad when people tell you no. Folk are under no obligation to reply to your text messages, to take your phone calls, or to extend the invitation to you to intrude and invade their personal space. Just because you ask permission doesn't mean that it'll be an automatic yes. And you have to be okay with that. Don't take it personally when someone tells you no. But when you do get a yes from them, take it to heart that they are giving you priority. Take it to heart and understand that when they tell you yes to taking your call or yes to replying to your text or yes, you can come visit my home. Understand that they are making you a priority over a lot of other things and appreciate that. But in the meantime, be okay with people telling you no. Number six, when we have a dream or a vision that we're passionate about that excites us, we often share that with others and we're disappointed when they don't share our same enthusiasm. But here's the thing, it's your vision, not theirs. They aren't meant to see what you see. They're not supposed to get excited the way that you get excited because it's not for them. They won't have the passion that you have. Yes, there are lots of people that can help you in reaching and bringing that dream to fruition, but that's all they can do is help. It's not for them to see the dream come true. So don't be discouraged when other people don't get excited about your dream or your vision like you do. They haven't been privy to know or to see what you know and see. And finally, number seven. Root canals really are not that bad. I had a root canal done earlier this week. Um, I talked a couple weeks ago about the crown. Well, the crown was not the fix. Um, I fractured a tooth and apparently the fracture went deeper. It went all the way down to the nerve. My dentist wound up doing just a whole root canal. And I have to be honest, I was nervous. I was like, oh my goodness, this root canal is going to be so uncomfortable. My face is going to swell up. It's going to hurt for a few days. None of that stuff happened. Getting my tooth filed down for the crown was actually worse than the root canal. Like, I don't know if it's that my dentist is just that good or if maybe people exaggerate the discomfort of a root canal. But for me and for my dentist, the root canal was like a walk in the park um she popped off that crown and you know did a little fouling and cleaning up and all that good stuff and popped that joker back on there in 45 minutes we were done like it was really quick um and i'm so glad that she that i let her go ahead and do the root canal because my tooth doesn't hurt anymore my i did hurt afterward um the only discomfort i had was where i got the shot in my gums um that was the only discomfort uh, i'm able to chew on that side i'm able to really put a beating on some oreos again without pain so uh thank you dr jeffis for fixing me right on up all right that's been this week seven i hope you enjoyed it if you did give this video a good old thumbs up and if you didn't keep on going and don't come back also, make sure you click below to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this week's seven cooking videos, DIY projects, and good old family foolery. So until next time, go where you're celebrated, not just tolerated. Be safe. Bye-bye.